Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Louis C.K. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. How you doing? Nice to be here uh, in Houston. A lot of people ask me the same thing when I travel. They say to me, what is it like growing up Chinese? And I always tell them that for me, growing up Chinese was really weird, you know? Because nobody in my neighborhood was Chinese, and uh, neither am I. So that's... So the other day I was uh, hanging out in an airport waiting for a fucking whatever and uh, I'm standing there and this guy asked me the time and I don't know if this ever happened to you but when somebody asks you the time you ever just panic? Like, I just suddenly I couldn't read my watch because it was just too much pressure, you know? He, and they're always in a hurry when they ask, you know? He's like, hey, you know the time? I'm like, yeah, I got it. It's, ah! It went like I got 10, 4, 9, 2. It's 40 of 980. <laughs> Shit! I hate it. I don't know. I can't deal with it. I wish people would warn me. I'm going to ask you the time in like half an hour. Just collect your thoughts. Because I can't. And I need a watch to get through the day. And I, but I wish I could. I was invisible. Because people ask me now what I do. People are like, you have the time? I just go, yeah, you suck. That's what time it is. Fuck you. That's what time it is, you piece of shit. Just because it's easier. I'm not a bad guy. It's just easier. They go away. They move on. One time, these French people asked me for directions in New York. And the best part was they didn't even... They just asked totally in French. They didn't make... There was no hesitation at all. They didn't even go like a... Uh, how do you say... Or something like that. Nothing. <laughs> they just walk up to me. And one of them just goes like... Je te le je, te le je, te le je, te le toi, te le je, le toi. I was like, I, I don't speak French. And the guy couldn't imagine what might be going wrong. He's like, je le je, le je, le je, le toi. And his friends like, pou, le, te, le, pum, pou. And I was like, guess what? I don't speak French. Which isn't weird, because we're not in France right now. Like one time I was standing on a street corner, and I was eating a peach. And this guy starts waving at me from across the street. And what do you do when someone waves at you? You just wave back. Your arm just shoots up there. And I had a peach, so I'm waving the peach at the guy. And then I realized that he's not waving at me. I don't even know the fucking guy. He's waving at a guy behind me. So I'm just waving a peach at nobody. People looking at me. I didn't want to stop waving because I, I, I would be admitting that I fucked up, you know? I just kept waving it. I just started going, look at my peach! I have a peach! Look at it! Then people were afraid of me. That's respect. One time I saw a guy in a bicycle, and he was about to get hit with a car door. It was horrible. And he wasn't looking, and the lady opening the door wasn't looking. It was just, like, just for me. And I didn't know what to do. I was like... Ah, like, I, I wanted to yell something, but what do you yell? And I'm trying to, like, time slows down. I'm trying to choose the thing to yell that will have all the information that he needs. Because it was happening really fast. I had, like, that much time to yell, you know. What can I yell in that much time? It's, hey, you're the guy to my God! You know, that's not... She's gonna open the door again! Ah, shit! So I, I just yelled out, bad thing! Wasn't really specific enough. <laughs> oh, well. This is weird. One time I was at a party, and a friend of mine goes to me, hey, is that your guitar behind you? So I looked at the guitar, and I was like, no, that's not mine. The weird thing is, I don't have a guitar. I've never had one. So why am I looking? I don't have to look. It really can't be mine. I should just be able to go, no, and I'm not looking. I don't need to. <laughs> you ever do this? You know when you tell somebody a story, and then a week later you tell them the same story again? Because you forgot. And by this time you've added a bunch of lies to it.
One time I went shopping. You ever do this? I went shopping and I had no money and I forgot. You ever done that? Like, you ever just forget you're broke and, like, go eat a meal or something? <laughs> and then you realize, ah, whoops. And I went, like, big sh- I went to this department store and I got, like, a fucking electric toothbrush and all that stuff. And the guy goes, $85? And I was like, oh, I don't have any money. <laughs> and he's like, well, you don't have enough? No, I don't have any. And where do you go from there, really? What's the next step from that? He didn't know either. He's like, uh, you want to put some items back? Is that what you're saying? Put them all back, I think. You... Got to keep marking a price down until you hit zero. Because that's what I got on me. Where do you do? Where do you... I didn't know how to leave, even. Like, all right, well, I'm all okay. I'm all set. Uh, I enjoyed picking this stuff out anyway. What do you do? You ever been that embarrassed in front of other people that you think there's no way they're not going to hate you for the rest of their lives? You ever just think you might as well just yell cocksucker and run out the door? Like, that might be the only way to save face. Just go, cocksucker! And just run off. Because at least that's what they'll remember about you. Yeah. I went to Walmart the other day. You guys have Walmart here, don't you? Who doesn't? We are all in Walmart right now, I think. That place is huge and fucking horrible. I can never finish shopping there. I just get tired and I go home. I just leave my cart full of shit in the middle of the store because I can't get through it. It's like a casino. There's no clocks and no windows and... Just fucking constant. Remember, we have houses you can have by a house. They're in aisle two. You can buy a giant thing for 10 cents. <laughs> it's so fucking evil. And there's people working it. They're all depressed because Walmart closed whatever store they owned. Now they have this shitty fucking apron on and they're, <laughs> they hate you because you shop there. And they, they sell everything. It's ridiculous. I like going there and asking them for stuff in combinations that kind of freak them out because you can get everything there, you know? I like to go to Walmart like, Hi, I need a jar of mayonnaise and a stopwatch and a Bible. <laughs> I'd like some road flares and a pair of pink panties. <laughs> Quickly, come on, hurry up. I need them right now. <laughs> Case of motor oil and a blonde wig. That's what I need. And a glass eye. Come on, hurry up. <laughs> I'm on a new diet. Feels good, man. I'm on that new diet. You know that new diet where you can eat steak with butter on it? You can eat burgers and you can have fries, ice cream, cake, and donuts. And you just get fat like a pig and you keep eating anyway. You, you feel shitty. You eat more, you jerk off, and go to sleep. That's my new diet. It's a very popular diet. It's got a, you're on that too? Yeah, it's very popular. It's got a name. It's called just fucking eat it. You're going to eat it. Eat it, you fat shit. Eat it. That's what it's called. And I get away with it. I can eat whatever, and I just get fat. It's no problem for me. It doesn't matter what I eat. I just gain weight. It's so easy. I'm lucky. <laughs> Man, it's brutal. I hate it. You know when you know you're going to eat something and it's going to make you feel like shitty and you eat it anyway? That's the worst thing. I do it all the time. Like, I go and I'm like, i got to have some donuts, you know? <laughs> Shit. And I go to the donut place. Just give me some donuts. <laughs> yeah, 12. What do you think? What the <laughs> fuck is that supposed to be? Yeah, 12. <laughs> and after two, I'm like, this sucks, but I just keep forcing them and I just feel like Shit. And I can't not do it. You know, and I have friends who like, uh, like I have a friend who's married and he can't stop fucking around. Like it's impossible for him. He's like, I had to fuck this girl. I had to fuck her. I met her, so I had to fuck her. But he can't stop himself. I, I have no problem being with one woman. I'm married, but I can't not eat all the donuts on the planet Earth because it's different. You know, for, for sex, there's masturbating. For food, there's nothing like that. You know? I can't watch the Food Network go, oh, yeah, 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 oh, ye
<laughs> yeah, cook that shit, bitch. Come on, yeah, cook it. Doesn't do me a lot of good. I used to drink a lot, too. And uh, I learned a lot from drinking, though. You learned lessons from drinking, things you never forget. One thing I learned from drinking is that if you ever go Christmas caroling, you should go with a group of people, you know? <laughs> and also go, like, around December. That's the best time of year. Just... When you're out there in mid-July and you're naked with a bottle of Jack Daniels, Outside your ex-girlfriend's house, going, Jingle bells! A lot of people don't consider that caroling for some reason. Yeah, I got married, and uh, I like it. I like being married. We fight sometimes, but here's what I've learned about fighting. This is the easiest way to end a fight. I just take her side against me. Because then, then it's over. It's just easier, you know? She's like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, I know, shit, damn it, oh! Oh, when's it gonna end? <laughs> it gives her nowhere to go, you know? Well, you're a dick. I know, I'm a dick. I'm the worst. <laughs> well, my wife and I were thinking of having a baby, and I'd like to have a kid, because you can name your kid anything you want. So I like that part. <laughs> I'd like to give my kid an interesting name, you know? Like a name with no vowels, maybe, you know? It's just like... Just like 40 Fs, that's his name. Go clean your room, you know, something like that. Some people name their kid a word, like sunshine or battery or something like that, like they use a word. I'd like to name my kid a whole phrase, you know? Something like ladies and gentlemen. That would be a great name for a kid. That way, when he gets out of hand, I get to go, ladies and gentlemen, please, and stuff like that. And I would like that. This is my son, ladies and gentlemen. I like kids, you know? I like some kids. You can't like all kids, because some kids are shitty. It's true. And some people don't want to ever admit that. There's people that are like, every child is like a star in the shining sea. No, some kids suck, man. Some kids are just shitty. It's true, you've seen them. You know when you're in a store and you see a kid and you're just like, fuck that kid, man. That kid's a fucking jerk. I hate that kid. This is a shitty little kid, man. I saw a kid like that once. I was in a store, and I'm looking at this kid and just fucking hating him. Because I'm, I'm waiting in line. What am I going to, you know? That's what you do when you're waiting in line. Is you just pick someone to hate while you're waiting, you know? <laughs> just some guy who just start forming an opinion with no information at all. You're a fucking loser. I hate that guy. What a prick. Wearing a tie. Fuck you. What do you think? You're better than me? You know, just, just to occupy yourself. He's standing there. He has no idea you're boiling with hatred, you know? So I picked this kid and I'm hating him. He's shitty. He was like, nee, nee. just seemed like a shitty kid to me. And I'm looking at him. And then he looked at me. And the worst thing is that this is a true story. This kid's looking at me. He's like six years old. Nobody else was looking. So I just went like this. I went. I just flipped him off. Just, just real quick, little thing between me and him. And he couldn't believe it. He was like, oh! He was blown away. Because nobody does that. Nobody gives the finger to some kid for no reason. I think I helped him out a little there, you know? Yeah, that happens. Deal with it. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, I think parents must want to do that to their kids all the time. As much as you love your kid, it has to be those times. Your kid's being this shit, and he's going, Why can't I have a candy? I wanted a candy! And you just want to go, hey, you know what? Fuck you, kid, all right? Yeah. Yeah, fuck you. How do you like that, huh? <laughs> fuck you, buddy! Oh. I always seem to get in trouble with people. I don't know what happens to me. Uh, 
I was in traffic once, and a guy behind me lost his mind. That ever happened to you? The guy behind you in traffic just decides that you're the problem. It's you. I don't know what happened. I was sitting in this car, and there's just there's 50 cars ahead of me before any light. And the guy behind me just starts, beep, 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 beep. I look at him, and he's honking just at me. He's amazed that I'm not going. He's going, go, Jesus! Me just go! Screaming out his window at me. Like I'm driving all 50 cars there, you know? I'm pushing them like shopping carts in a parking lot. What does he think? He keeps yelling, go! And I, I'm trying to do that thing. What? I can't. What do you want? What do you want? Why are you... But it just made him matter. He was like... Bruh, bruh, bruh. He was like purple and crazy. And I'm laughing at him, you know, till he gets out of his car. He's one of these guys, gets out of his car, comes up to my car, starts screaming at me, move it! Move it! And what am I gonna, what am I gonna say back? What's gonna be my argument that's gonna make him see clearly, you know? Like, well, I can't because of all the cars. I'm not able to get through the cars. Because they're solid. They're made of solid material. You know what I mean? And he's going to go, oh, yeah, I, oh, no, I didn't know they were solid. That's right. Yeah, you can't drive through the cars. Well, I'll just go back to my car and wait. I'm sorry. That's not going to happen. But he kept yelling at me. So I just decided, you know what? I'm going to argue with this guy. I'll argue with him. But I'm going to argue about something else. I'm not going to have his argument. I'm going to have mine. So he goes, move it! And I go, well, give me back my jacket! <laughs> and he stopped. And I was like, yeah, you got my jacket! Give it back! Now! I want it! He got scared. Got back in his car and he locked his doors. So, you know... That's what I do from now on. I'm going to do a couple impressions for you guys. All right. This first one, this is my impression of a superhero being propositioned by a hooker. All right, a superhero being propositioned by a hooker. Hey, baby, want to have a good time? No. <laughs> All right, now this is a... Uh, This is a guy who doesn't know how to match his face to what he's saying. It's a guy who doesn't know how to match his face to what he's saying. You guys get out! The place is burning down! <laughs> Here's a guy who doesn't know if he's from Alabama or Brooklyn. Doesn't know if he's from Alabama or Brooklyn. Hey, what are you guys doing? Hey, bud. <laughs> hey, buddy, how you fucking doing, huh? <laughs> Let's do this. You guys will like this. You know when you go to a diner? You know those old diners where you order breakfast, and they take your order, they yell it to the kitchen, but they use, like, a code? You know those old diner codes? Well, I came up with my own code, and it covers all breakfast foods, and I'd like to demonstrate it for you. But I need a little help from him. So just order breakfast, sir, all right? And when he orders his breakfast, I'll translate it to you using my code. So just the way you like your breakfast, usually. Scrambled eggs. All right, any, anything else for that? Uh, bacon. Scrambled eggs and bacon. Something to drink there, buddy? Orange juice, Orange juice all right. All right, uh, wake up the monkey and show him a dollar. <laughs> Shave my back and slap my sister. Wax lips, two lumpy tits riding sidecar. And scrambled eggs and bacon and orange juice. <laughs> I was talking to my friend the other day. I have this friend. You ever have one of those friends? You ever have a friend who's just an idiot? Well, this friend of mine, he's always talking in cliches. That's what I hate about him. He can't, he just talks in cliches. And he doesn't even say one that matches to what I was saying, you know? Like, he's just got one ready for when it's his turn to talk. <laughs> 
you know, whatever I say, I'll be like, oh, I locked my keys in my car. And he's like, yeah, well, don't shit where you eat. <laughs> the fuck does that mean? <laughs> like, oh, I forgot my sister's birthday. Yeah, well, payback's a bitch. <laughs> I, look, I like those people that use old sayings, but they don't know how they end, so they just trail off. You know, people are like, yeah, well, a bird in a hand. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't think you know what you're saying. A bird in a hand what, you idiot? You know what I do? I just make up my own endings, because nobody gives a shit. Nobody's listening to you. I just go, ah, a bird in a hand is like a man in the sand. You know what I mean? When in Rome, you gotta grab the hand of a badger's dad. That's what I always say. Yep. I was talking to my, uh, this guy Jerry that I know, and he's one of these guys, you know those people who, they sound like they're happy for you, but they, they, they sound like they're in pain also? You know people that talk like that? He's like, hey, what's going on? And I go, well, my sister is getting married. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh. That's ter- oh, that's terrific. Yeah, and I, I think we're going to have a baby. Oh, my God. Ah! Ah! God bless you! Wow. Thanks, pal. This is, this is a true story. I know I, I say a lot of the stories are true. and You know, there's a lot of stories that are bullshit. You know, like those urban myths. You know those stories that people swear are true, but you know that they're bullshit. You know, like everybody has that story, like the guy who goes on a date with a girl and... You know, he sleeps with her and he wakes up, and when he wakes up, she's at the foot of the bed and she's going, la 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 And you know it's bullshit, but he's like, you know what happened to me? And you're like, fuck you. But anyway, this story is true. So I called a friend of mine the other day. You ever make a phone call and you get the wrong number and the person that answers can't believe that you would ever get a wrong number? <laughs> you ever get someone who doesn't take it in stride? I got this lady once. I was like, hi, is Tony there? She's like, who? <laughs> Tony. I don't know a Tony. How did you get this number? What do you want from me? I guess it was the first time her phone rang in like 20 years or something. She hung up, so I just kept pressing redial. Put Tony on her, I'll fucking kill you. Put her on! I used to like when my phone rang. Now it's always some idiot calling me. AT&T calls me every day. Hi, it's AT&T. You're calling. If you want to switch to AT&T, it's good service because you call your friend on the phone. <laughs> and they can be in another part of the area. And you call them. And you don't have to yell or anything. You're just right there. So what do you think? Would you like to switch? It only costs some money. Would you like to switch for the AT&T? And I'm like, no, I, I already have AT&T. I have it already. Why are you calling me? Well, still, you, you want some more? Because it's good. <laughs> Get some more AT&T. It's better than other ones. I know, I have it! Stop fucking calling me! <laughs> My bank called me the other day. I love this. My bank calls and they, and they say, uh, uh, hi, we're calling because you don't have enough money. And I was like, yeah, I know that. I also am of the opinion that I don't have enough money. And she's like, no, you don't understand. See, you have insufficient funds. Well, yeah, that's also a very good way of putting it. I think my funds are grossly insufficient. Thank you for calling. I thought, I thought it was my problem that I'm fucking broke. I thought that was just my own... <laughs> I thought I was the only one who suffered, but apparently the bank has a serious problem with it. Like somehow it fucks them up that I'm broke. And she said, well, no, you can't have such a low amount of money. It's we, we can't tolerate that. I'm like, well, then give me some fucking money. If you feel I don't have enough, then give me some. <laughs> they have some money at the bank, but that's not what they do. They do the opposite. They take your money. If you don't have enough, they charge you money for being broke. They charged me $15 for only having $20. 
I, if I could have gotten the 20 out, I could fucking have it today. But I didn't get there quick enough, so now I have five. And I don't know if you've ever had five dollars in the bank, but I found that you can't get the shit out. You can't get it out, because there's no fives in any machine anywhere. And it costs a dollar fifty to use it anyway, so, and there's certainly not three dollars and fifty cents in any fucking cock-sucking machine in any bank. There's no quarters and singles, motherfuckers. Shit, dick, ball ass. I'm not, I'm not eloquent. I just fuck them. That's all I have to say about it. <laughs> but that was the worst. My $5 trapped in there, and I would just go visit it. That's all I could do. But then one day they charged me again for having not enough money. So then I had negative 10. Negative 10. You know what that means? That means I don't even have no money. I don't have that much. I'd love to have nothing, but that's more than I have. I'm not even broke. I'm not that good. I have not 10. That's how much I have. That means I can't even afford to get something that doesn't cost anything. If somebody says to me, you want this? It's free. I gotta go, I can't. I can't afford it. That's beyond my means. And you know what's great is if you have a lot of money, the bank gives you money. They pay you for having money. They say, that's so nice of you to have money. Here, have some more. Here, take this guy's 15. Fuck him. Who does he think he is? <laughs> it's only right that since he has so little, he should have to give most of it to you because you have so much. It makes perfect sense. <clears throat> Sometimes I dream of what I would do with money if I had it, you know? Like I was uh, reading about Bill Gates. That guy, you know, he owns Microsoft. He has $90 billion, that guy. Now, if I had $90 billion, I wouldn't have it for very long. <laughs> I think I would just fucking blow it. I would, because I feel like I would only need $1 billion. That's all that I would keep. Because I could live pretty well in a billion dollars, you know? I'm not good with money, but I think $1 billion I could probably stretch for a long time. And think of, having, think of having $89 billion that you don't truly need. You know the kind of shit you could do with $89 billion? You could take like $1 billion, just peel off one of those one day, and just, you could buy every baseball team and just make them all wear dresses. You could do that. That's the kind of shit you could do, you know? Or you could take 89 billion and you could probably cure like most diseases, you know? That's what I would do. But first, I would change my name to something like, uh, like Farty McCrab Lice, you know? Or, uh, or Cunty McShitballs. That would be my name legally. Then I'd donate all 89 billion, because then people would have to say my name. It would be, they'd, everyone would have to say it. Dan Rather today, Cunty McShitballs. <laughs> the president would have me over. God bless you, Cunty, thank you very much. <laughs> God bless Cunty McShitballs. <laughs> you can open up a business, too. You know what I would love to do with $89 billion? I'd love to open up a business that just sucks, you know? But just keep it going. Just, like, keep expanding. The worst fucking store you ever saw. Just, like, it's called, like, the Shit Fuck Piss Store. That's the name of the store. And it's just awful. All we sell is pencils. And they cost a million dollars each. And there'd be commercials like every two minutes on TV for the shit fuck piss store. Come on down, pencils are still one million dollars each. And people are like, that place sucks! But I'd keep it open just to piss them off, you know? Just to get people angry. I'm not paying a million dollars for a pencil. I think that's overpriced. But they've been open for 50 years. That would be my dream. Just surround every Starbucks with five shit-ass piss fuck stores. Or whatever it was. I don't, I don't even remember the name of my shittiest store anymore. <laughs> so I was listening to the radio on the way here. I was listening to one of those classic hit stations. 
And they had that song. It's one of those 70s protest songs that was that really sucked. You know those protest songs that they, they ran out of shit to protest, so they just came up with something? This song was that guy that goes, sign, sign, everywhere, sign. You know that song? The guy's like, he gets all mad at signs. Like, ah, oh, signs. They're fucked up. It's bullshit. Blocking the scenery, breaking my mind. Do this, don't do that. There's nothing wrong with signs. There's signs that say, don't go to that dangerous place. Those are good signs. Stop signs are a really good idea. He's like, yeah, signs suck, man. It's bullshit. Can't you read the sign? Then there's this one part of the song where he says that he went to a job interview, and it said, he goes, and the sign said, long-haired freaky people need not apply. All right, first of all, no, it didn't. You're a liar. No sign ever said that ever. And you're trying to get people angry at something you made up. And that's fucking stupid. Sometimes you meet racist people too. You know what's funny to me? When you meet someone who's racist and they have an excuse. I met this guy once very racist. I don't know where he's from, but I asked his friend, why is he like that? And his friend goes, ah, well, he was born on a farm. What kind of farm was that? How do you get... Maybe the animals were racist. Maybe the animals on the farm were racist. They're like, Jews. Jews. Blacks. Blacks. Jews. Blacks. Mexicans. Wow. It's a pretty racist farm. You know what, too? Every time you hear a racial stereotype, it's always negative. It's always something shitty. Why can't we have racial stereotypes that are nice? You can say things about races that are ignorant, but pleasant. You know? You're like, yeah, you know those Chinese people. They're made of candy. You know? (laughs) And whenever you see, like, public service announcements on television that are like, don't be racist or whatever. They're always shitty. They're always badly made, you know? But then you watch like a, uh, like a commercial for like Mountain Dew and there's a fucking cheetah stealing a guy's fucking soda. They should have like p- PSAs that are really great, you know, like young people at a bar and there's music, you know, fucking shitty rock and roll and they're drinking and some kid goes like, a, like, dude, don't hate the Jews or something like that, you know? Like, the other guy's like, why not? Cuz, just don't hate the Jews. But why not? Like a girl walks in with big tits and it says, don't hate the Jews on her shirt. He's like, that's why, yeah! <laughs> don't hate the Jews. <laughs> People would not hate Jews. Because they want to be like them kids. <laughs> One time I was, uh, I was uh, walking down the street in New York and this guy told me I was wearing a faggy shirt. What does that mean? Total stranger walks up to me. Hey, nice faggy shirt, you faggot! 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 I remember this shirt. It, w- it was pink, and it had little pictures of guys blowing each other on it. You know, like a, it's like a print. You know what's funny to me? The people get angry that there are gay people that they don't even know. Some people get so angry, like somehow that someone's gay, like thousands of miles away, like fucks them up. There's guys that just like, ah, someone sucking a cock, damn it! Ah! I know it, someone's fucking a guy up the ass, ah! (laughs) Like I can understand it if like two guys are blowing each other on your lawn where you're trying to cut, you know? Oh, come on, I can't cut there. Someone's gotta stop these gay people from this behavior, it's not right. (laughs) <laughs> I was talking to my friend about uh, my neighbor once and I asked him do you think he's gay? and my friend goes uh, yeah he's really gay <laughs> what does that mean? how do you get to be really gay? <laughs> are there levels? Or you start out a little I'm just a little gay I don't know Just only a little I just feel like touching a penis that's all just like that just a little tiny touching of the penis 
Then one day you're taking it up the ass, jerking off two guys and blowing somebody all at the same time. And you realize, wow, I'm really gay. Boy, I am the gayest man in the world. I am Fagator, no one is gayer than me. That's a very gay person right there. One time I had a gay dream though, because you can't, you can't control what you dream about. I had this dream that I was in Italy. It's a really weird dream. I'm in Italy like in an outdoor cafe with a friend and these two young boys pull up like on scooters, like you know. And they go, come swimming with us. We're going to go swimming. And it's a dream. So you just go along. I was like, yeah, fuck it, why not? So I get on the back of some kid's scooter, and we go up in the mountains. And they're in this lake, and they take off their clothes, and they go, come into the water. The water is beautiful. So we start swimming with these gay kids. And I ask my friend, is this gay to do this? To, like, swim with young Italian boys? And my friend in my dream, he goes, no, we're just hanging out. And I was like, yeah, all right, yeah, that's cool. Anyway, so I'm making out with one of the kids, right? And it hits me, of course this is gay. What the fuck am I thinking about? How could I have made this mistake? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't like to do anything where my ass is involved in any way. Just my ass. That's my jurisdiction is my ass. My ass is a very important part of my life. It can fuck up, like, weeks, you know? Like, I was staying in a hotel, and the soap was really nasty, and I had an itchy asshole for, like, a week, and I could have won a million dollars. I still would have been going, fuck, my asshole! It itches! I wanted to, like, eat bad food so I would, like, fart to scratch it. That's how itchy it was. One time I had sex with this woman who scared the shit out of me. It was the most traumatic night of my life. I was 18 and I met a woman who was about 25. She was a nymphomaniac, a true nymphomaniac, which is something that guys think they want, a woman that's gonna fuck you all night long, till you find out that, yes, she's going to fuck you all night long. <laughs> Just think about it for a second. Oh man, it was brutal. She was crazy. She was like, come on, fuck me, come on, fuck me. And I'm like, wait, hey, all right, I think I am. I don't even, no, oh, just second. And I'm young, so I'm trying to like, yeah, I'm fucking you. Ooh, I, ow, hey, Jesus, stop. Finally, I was like, I don't want to fuck you anymore. I'm sorry that I fucked you and I don't want to fuck you anymore. I want to go home. But she wouldn't stop. She was like backing herself into me really hard. She's going like, bang, bang, bang. And it really fucking hurt a lot, you know? <laughs> so I had to say something to her. But what do you say really in that situation? What's the appropriate? You know what I said? I said, hey, take it easy there. It's the most polite thing I could think of. I didn't want to say, hey, don't back your snatch into me so hard. You're going to rip my dick off, you fucking lunatic. I thought that would hurt her feelings. Anyway, you guys have been really great. Thanks a lot. I hope you had a good time. Good night. Thanks.